This video is a technical resource covering the ANC1 device configuration. If you're looking for information on how ANC works, or how it can be used to aid in your acoustic solution, please refer to the ANC1 overview and demonstration video first. Please note that the values and settings suggested in this video are a good initial guide, however are primarily for demonstration purposes, and the exact settings should be tailored for each unique application. First off is assigning the ANC to the specific amplifier channel. Only a single ANC device can be assigned to a channel at any one time. This is done by selecting the checkbox next to the corresponding amplifier output channel. In the ANC1 properties, a drop-down allows the physical ANC device to be associated with the amplifier and the amplifier channel we just selected. This ANC1 is now associated with channel 1 of my Platform 1 area amplifier. To configure how the ANC should respond, switch over to the Audio and Live Controls tab. The first thing we need to do is set the microphone gains. Enable the first microphone and phantom power if it's required. Increase the mic 1 gain until the meter is averaging around minus 50 dB. You want to set the gain when the room noise is at its lowest, which is most likely when there's no one in the room. If you're using both mic inputs on the ANC1, as I will be for this demonstration, you'll also need to set the gain on it. Switch off mic 1 and enable mic 2. Increase the gain until you're averaging minus 50 dB on it as well. Although there's two physical microphone inputs on a single ANC1, only one mic is required for the ambient noise compensation to work. One mic would be sufficient for a medium-sized foyer. However, using the example of a long corridor, having two sense points would be better than one. Once both mics are enabled at the same time, the audio signals are summed and the average taken. For the majority of installations, setting the ambient threshold to 10 dB above the noise floor should be a sufficient value. The ambient threshold is the level in dB that the noise compensation starts to engage. In the real world, this means once a person enters a currently empty acoustic space, they can make up to 10 dB of noise above the room's noise floor before the paging and background music levels begin to increase. Another point to note is that the ANC1 is aware of paging and background music and only reacts to true changes in ambient levels. The RT60 value is a measurement how long it takes for sound to decay 60 dB within the room's acoustical space. The default is 1000 milliseconds, and typically this would be about the value of an office space, foyer, or hallway. A concert hall would be around 2000 milliseconds, and an empty convention centre typically around 5000 milliseconds due to the large area involved. The maximum and minimum compensation fields are used to enter a value in dB for the maximum or minimum gain applied to the program source. I want my theoretical room to increase from 0 dB to a maximum of 10 dB and no louder. The ratio dropdown is used to specify the proportion which the level will be raised in regards to the ambient level. This means for every 1 dB increase within the acoustical space, the program source increases by the value selected in the dropdown. So say I select 0.25. For every extra 1 dB of noise in the room, the output level of the zone will increase by a quarter of a dB. In the Advanced tab, the Noise Floor Ambient setting is expressed in dB and allows the expected noise floor level to be set. The noise floor should be 10 to 20 dB below the microphone sense level to ensure the algorithm is working optimally. Considering we set the microphone gain so the sense level was around minus 50 dB earlier, the default value of minus 60 for the noise floor is sufficient. The values entered into the compensation field relate to the amount of time over which gain is altered. A train station requires very fast changes once a train arrives or passes through the station. However, a convention centre only requires gradual changes as it slowly fills up. The maximum gain adjustment rate, up and down, defines how much gain can be added or reduced in one second and the response time is used to specify how quickly the compensator reacts to ambient noise increasing in the room. For example, the train station would use high gain adjustment rates, say 8 dB a second and a quick response time, somewhere around 500 milliseconds. However, the convention center would use low gain adjustment rates, say 2 dB a second and a slow response time, around 300,000 milliseconds, or 5 minutes for the rest of us. The weighting refers to the response curve applied to the microphone. This is an advanced setting that filters which frequencies are used by the ANC algorithm. In the United States, A weighting is typically used, and European countries typically use ITU-R468 setting. 